Hi, and welcome to Introduction to Nail Diagnosis. I'm Dr. Bradley McEwen, naturopath, nutritionist, herbalist, educator, researcher, and mentor. I've been in clinical practice for over 19 years, as one of the main things I do with clinical practice is utilizing physical examination. So I use a lot of nail diagnosis, face and tongue diagnosis, posture, clinical nutritional signs as well, general appearance, and also that tone of voice and changes in, um, in responses. I use a lot of timelines as well. Um, a lot of you will know that I use timelines a lot in clinical practice. Um, I've presented at a number of national and international conferences. I present a lot of seminars and webinars such as this one and mentor practitioners and students. I have a number of peer reviewed publications in international journals as well. So in this brief webinar today, I'm going to be covering the vertical ridging and Bose lines or horizontal ridging. As you can see, there's quite a few NAS lines to be covered in the main webinar that will be presented in May 2018. They will also include these NAS signs listed, as well as conditions related to NAS signs and the tissue salts and celloids, along with nutritional medicine um, prescribing. So NAS often reflect the general state of health. It's been long appreciated that systemic disease can produce changes in nails and whether um, the, it's a child, an adult or an um, older adult, these signs can actually play a very major role in our clinical prescribing. And when you think about it, nails have been utilised for a long time now. Hippocrates um, was one of the first people to note clubbing in fingers as well as um, into the 1700s and we use a lot in clinical practice in today's now patients really present to the clinic with complaints related to their nails. They normally come to you for fatigue, anxiety, stress, um, digestive problems. It might be um, SIBO, PCOS, um, blood disorders of, as in glucose metabolism and quite a few other health conditions. So as part of the um, clinical process, I always suggest people to have a look at the nails, face and tongue, for example, and have a detailed examination of the fingernails particularly because they can actually give us a lot of information about the nutritional deficiencies that may be present in the person currently or in the past that may actually be leading to the health conditions in today's consultation. So in this brief webinar, we'll be talking about the two um, clinical signs that I mentioned earlier and the main webinar, which will be presented in May 2018, will cover the wider range of um, signs noted. Um, I aim to improve the um, clinical skills of examination um, for students and practitioners, as well as helping improve your confidence in doing so. So learning outcomes is identify and describe nail signs, identify potential nutritional deficiencies in relation to nail signs and clinical examination, and identify health conditions related to the nail signs. Um, one of my favourite quotes that you'll know about is an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So 28 grams is worth more than 454 grams of cure. So general clinical examination, I always um, you know, start the consultation and then around about the midpoint, I do a nail diagnosis, um, look at the tongue, I do pulse and blood pressure as well as physical appearance. Um, I may also look at the blood tests that they've come in with or refer for blood tests that need to be done, scans, x-rays and hair, um, hair nail um, combinations of diagnosis as well. Now something to note, nails are made from keratin, um, minerals, fats, particularly cholesterol um, in the nails as well. So there's a lot of um, nutrients that actually strengthen the nail plate and that is where um, we would observe later on clinical nutritional deficiencies in these patients. Um, exogenous substances such as medications, drugs, heavy metals such as arsenic can be deposited in the nails as well, leading us to bigger clues to what's actually happening in this person's health. Now very briefly, what we're going to look at is the moon. So looking in this area here, looking in the moon, looking at the edge of the nails as well as the whole nail as well. Look for any ridging lines, dots, splots, splashes, or anything else like that. But also pay attention to the actual you know, outer edges of the nail to see if there's any dryness or crackling in that area, because that could be a central fatty acid deficiency and zinc deficiency, for example. So the main idea is have a look at the whole nail um, 
and look at it from different light angles as well. So a lot of people might use an um, iris torch or a magnifying glass. Have a look at underneath that and sort of turn the nail under the light to see if there's any ridging or lines because not all lines show up in normal light. You might need to um, ha have an extra flashlight in that case. Or you can actually use um, an iPhone or a mobile phone to actually take photos or images of these nails, but also use the light to um, further view. So nail diagnosis, um, the first one is vertical ridging. It is one of the most common nail signs present. Um, there are longitudinal lines or striations or ridges. It may appear as intended grooves or projecting ridges. As you can see here, this is quite a good example of lines that are actually going quite deep and detailed. If we look for out, there's quite a few striations in there. And if you were to fill this with your own nail or um, fingertip, this would be quite <laughs> ridgy, so to say, um, where you'd be actually feeling it and it'd be quite pronounced in that feeling. And as I said, I always suggest people have a feel around the nail. And also something to note here is there are a couple of dots up the top, as well as there's a good looking moon. But look at the dryness around the um, nail portion here. And that could be related to essential fatty acid deficiency in this person. So this person's already presenting to me with a number of clinical signs that are very helpful. Here's an example of one that is not as defined. There's a big one in the middle, as you can see, quite a few smaller ones on the sides. And if you were to feel these, they're not as pronounced as the one that was beforehand. Um, some of the causes of ridging is trauma, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, thyroid disorders. So there's quite a few health conditions, even type two diabetes and cardiovascular disease show up with vertical ridging as well as horizontal ridging. But something to take note of is just have a good look around the edges of the nails as well. This one here is a much healthier nail section compared to the previous one. And here's another one that's sort of in between. As you can see, there's dryness around the nail bed, around this top point here near the cuticle. A nice to find moon, a bit of um, issue there, a bit of wastage I could say, and quite a few ridges going through log longitudinal vertical ridges. And this person's been having quite a few health issues along the way. It may be um, thyroid disorder, as this was the case in this patient. Um, a number of health or nutritional deficiencies, I should say, is silica. It's one of the first things we think about with nail diagnosis is silica. Iron deficiency, in this case, would be looking at um, you know, capillary return, feeling the extremities, wherever they're a bit cool or um, sort of cold in that case. Um, and just general look at the pinkiness of the nail underneath. B vitamins such as folate, B6 and B12 could also show up as deficiencies as well as protein. So there's a number of deficiencies that show up here. And as I said in, in other um, you know, seminars and webinars I've done, we use these kind of things to guide us to the next stage. So we look at all the different clinical signs they present with, which might be fatigue, weakness, anxiety, and we tie these things in together. Um, another sign could be a poor nutrient absorption, digestive weakness. So we could be looking at um, intestinal permeability issues, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, um, low digestive acid or enzyme function as well. So in some cases, these patients may not be deficient in silica, iron, B vitamins and protein, for example, um, and along with zinc, but they actually may have digestive weakness where they're not absorbing the nutrients effectively. So it's something we need to keep in mind. Horizontal ridging or bows. So these are um, going horizontal, so going across. So it's very similar to the effect of the vertical ones. But in this case, we'll be feeling along, you know, from tip to end and just feeling for anything along there as well. It may be ridges or banding, depending on the depth and the length of the health of the illness. And if there's recurrent bouts of illness, this will lead to several series of these furrows or grooves. If it's a one-off health illness from like a number of weeks ago, for example, you might only just find one. But if this person's continuously getting ill or it's a chronic disease such as type 2 diabetes, um, cardiovascular disease, cardiometabolic syndrome, thyroid disorders, digestive disorders, these kind of health conditions are prolonged. These are chronic long-term health conditions, so they will last longer on the signs. Um, if it's a short, abrupt ridging, there could be a sudden onset, like a fever recently. Um, there could be actually injury to the nail, which does make sense. So someone may have slammed their finger or thumb 
in a drawer, for example, with a hammer or something, and that could lead to injury to the nail, leading to a single line growing out. But if it's a continual one, like I said, it is a chronic long-term health condition that we must be looking at. Malnutrition, malabsorption syndromes. I may even be looking at celiac disease, uh, Crohn's disease, malabsorption syndromes that are very similar, poor digestive um, function, low digestive enzymes, blood glucose dysregulation, so the absorption to the system, acute or chronic illness, depending on the depth and severity of these signs, severe stress, circulatory disorders, including cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis. We can see it in psychological stress and trauma, acute toxic overload, and just general toxin exposure. But one thing to um, note about all now signs is think of the occupation that they're actually in. Because if a person's in an occupation that uses a lot of materials, those materials could be weakening the now leading to these signs. So physical examination, such as nail diagnosis, face, tongue, um, hair analysis, etc., play a major role in determining the treatment and management options of patients in clinical practice. Nails often reflect the general state and well, a state of health and well-being, as well as nutritional deficiencies. And systemic diseases can produce changes in the nails, such as cardiovascular disease, thyroid disorders, um, just general health, I suppose. Nutritional medicine is fundamental and essential and all health and disease. And you all know I'm a major fan of food as medicine, so I'll be looking at all the different nutritional deficiencies that we briefly talked about. Folate, B12, B6, zinc, silica, calcium, for example, um, iron. I'll be looking at the food sources, the main food sources of these. And look, we could do a lot. Some of these changes may take time because we don't always know what the cause is. So again, identify the cause, find the cause, treat the cause, and that is half the job done. And then food is medicine is the next point. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your time during this um, brief introduction to nail diagnosis. For more information, visit my website, follow me on Instagram or on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash optimum mentoring, where you'll find more information about um, upcoming webinars and seminars. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Good luck and I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much for your time.